please welcome Annie Foster. Good morning, and uh, thank you all for allowing me to be here and just share a little bit about my experience. So um, I think my bio in the materials explains that I am the general counsel to Governor Ducey. I want to make clear I'm not here on his behalf today. I'm here on my own and my family. Um, and so with that, uh, I'm going to share a little bit about my story. I went to the governor's office um, in 2018. I've been with his administration since um, 2015. During that time, um, he and our administration have worked on a number of innovations, including building this campus, opening the Dignity Cancer Center campus downtown, um, advocating and um, implementing telehealth here in Arizona, um, the right to try, and a number of other innovations, most recently um, genomic testing. I never realized that any of those things back when any of them were going on would actually impact my life. So back in 2020, we all remember 2020 and COVID. Um, as the general counsel, my job was to assist the governor in all the legalities that were required. It was a 24-7 job. It's always a 24-7 job. I would say it was a 48-7 job um, in that time. Um, you never realize how many hours are in the day until you actually need every single one of them. Um, we had a spike in the middle of 2020 here in Arizona that everybody's probably well aware of. And as that spike decreased towards the fall, we were in the middle of lots of litigation. And it was about two years ago um, last week that I happened to find a lump in my breast. Um, so in the middle of all of this that was going on, I now also needed to deal with a very personal issue. Um, I was very blessed in dealing with that issue. Um, I, my doctors got me in uh, for a mammogram and as I was doing the mammogram and the ultrasound, um, the um, tech was very helpful and she actually fit me in for a biopsy that afternoon. Let me tell you, that, that urgency, um, as was mentioned, was amazing. I didn't have to wait because I've had several friends since contact me and they have had to wait for three weeks in between those um, things. I was able to get in that afternoon. There are small blessings in COVID. People weren't coming in for testing, and so there was space. Um, I got in that afternoon, and they did my biopsy. And so within three days, I knew that I had invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, they told me, luckily, it was early. It was a small stage 2A. It, um, you know. 21 days of radiation and I would be done, um, probably no issue. Um, but as life would have it, it's not always that simple for the patients that are in this room. You always realize that what you get told initially um, is not always how it ends up. So I meet with an amazing oncologist um, at Dignity Health and that experience Again, I was so blessed with. I had a friend who had previously had breast cancer and she made a recommendation for a doctor. And I went to see Dr. Went um, down at Dignity Cancer Center. But when I called Dignity Cancer Center um, and told them what was going on, because when I had the biopsy, they said, you're gonna wanna have this removed. Again, that was essential. I wasted no time. They gave me a list of doctors to call and I was able to get into, within three weeks, see my doctors. But it didn't just stop there. Dignity set it up so that when I went in for my very first appointment, I saw the surgeon, I saw the oncologist, I saw a social worker. And that day, which again was hard, 
because we were all wearing masks. Um, you couldn't, I couldn't have family with me that day because they live in other areas of the country. But they left me in one room and they all came to me. And I can't tell you how important that was. I didn't have to try to find a room as I was so emotional. So I met with them and got all kinds of information. But the most essential that day was the, genetic, the geneticist who came and spoke with me and said, you know, we don't know, you know, do you want genetic testing? That was my only complaint that day is that it should have been absolutely mandatory that I had genetic testing. But I knew enough that I should have gotten it and I said yes. You see, when I was growing up, I had a grandmother who died of breast cancer. She was 48, but I didn't know that until I started going through my process because she died in 1968. No one in the family knew because it was mostly men in my family. So there wasn't this line of breast cancer um, deaths or survivors in my family to point to an issue that we should be looking at. But also what I didn't know is that the gene that, in, that makes you susceptible to breast cancer, BRCA, also makes you susceptible to a number of other cancers. And as I sat, sat there with my genetic counselor and we laid out my family tree, it became, it became very obvious that there was a very real likelihood that there was a genetic issue in our family. Fast forward, I had surgery and then um, Dr. Went recommended, um, you know, did some testing on the tumor and, um, you know, you get that oncotype diox spit out where, you know, it gives you this number and tells you whether, you know, chemotherapy is going to be helpful or not. And I got the answer I didn't want to hear, which was chemotherapy is the recommendation. And I actually argued, I'm an attorney, I argued with Dr. Went. And I said, well, is this really necessary? You didn't find it in my lymph nodes. It, it, you know, you got the tumor. It's not in the, in the margin. So, you know, do I really, really need to go through chemotherapy? Because I didn't want to lose my hair. I was in the middle of an amazing um, job and some major projects that I couldn't step away from. And so he said, well, it's your decision. Another really important piece. Don't assume that um, patients are just going to take your advice because they need to weigh it in terms of what's going on in their lives and what's important. Likewise, I did not opt for a double mastectomy, which is what my surgeon wanted me to do because I was going to have to make that decision in such a short amount of time, and it wasn't a necessary decision at that time. So after arguing with Dr. Went a little bit, him talking to me about the likelihood of recurrence, I said, okay, we got to do this. And so we moved forward. But I share all of this because it's all been such a blessing. So let's go back to that genetic testing. After I got the genetic testing and found out that I was BRCA positive, they ask you, as many people in this room know, to share that information with your family. And I did. I shared it with my family and I felt guilty. And make sure that you're aware that your patients will feel guilty for sharing that information with their family. So that led to my family doing genetic testing. My sister is BRCA positive, and she has since had a double mastectomy. But most importantly, my first cousin had testing, and she was BRCA positive. So 
there's a number of preventative surgeries that you can do. And my first cousin went through them as well. And in the middle of a hysterectomy, her surgeon found cancer that she had no symptoms for. And although they thought it was ovarian and they thought they had caught it early, it turned out that it was pancreatic cancer. And three weeks after her surgery, when she found out it was a diagnosis none of us could have imagined, she and her hus husband both called me. And they said, Annie, you saved her life because we caught it early enough that she is able to have quality of life and go through treatment and will be able to spend more time with their children who are still young. She is currently going through um, treatment. She's gone through her first round of chemo and she is coming up on a year of survival of pancreatic cancer. So I have been blessed with an amazing patient experience and I hope you can take some of those things to share uh, with people you work with. But above and beyond that, the one thing that we need to absolutely make sure is that patients are being told to share their experiences with their families and also understand what their family history is. And with that, I thank you.